Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is SAS uh, triangle congruence, which means side angle side. Okay, so uh, our essential question is what does the SAS triangle congruence theorem tell us about triangles? So again, this is side and then angle and then side right there. Okay. So recall from the last lesson, you guys, we talked about um, opposite sides, opposite angles, adjacent sides, adjacent angles, and included sides and angles. So, so what angle was opposite side BC? It would have been this angle, angle A. What, what uh, side was opposite angle C? Opposite angle C is side AB. What side is included between angles A and B? That would have been this side, AB, right there. What angle is included with the sides AC? A, here's AC over here. And AB right here, it would have been angle A right there. And then adjacent, adjacent to angle B. What side's adjacent to this angle? Either this side or this side. What's, uh, what angle was adjacent to side BC, which was uh, this side right here? It would have been either this angle is adjacent or this angle. Adjacent is next to or touching it. Okay, opposite is go straight across and it would be opposite, so sides and angles and stuff. So here we go. The SAS uh, triangle congruence theorem. So if two sides and the included angle, the included angle between the two sides uh, are of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, the triangles are congruent. So what does that look like? Well, here's a picture right here. Here I have two sides and the included angle. Do you see how this angle is the included angle between these two sides right here? Okay, they're congruent to two sides over here and the included angle over here. If that's true, then these triangles are congruent. So that means everything else is congruent by CPCTC. Okay, now if I said these two sides, can you see that this is a non-included angle and this angle would be a non-included angle? The included angle is the angle that's in between the two sides. So you have to recognize that it's the included angle. So from before, you guys, we had, um, uh, here's uh, two sides and in the included angle. That's right now, what we're doing right now. Two sides and this included angle congruent to two sides and this included angle. In the last lesson, we did two angles. So this one was angle side angle. And over here, it would have been angle side angle. Sorry, my finger slips and so it makes this mouse jump right here. Anyway, so this is angle side angle because it goes angle to side to angle, the markings do. And on these markings, these markings go side then to angle then to side. So it's side angle side. Okay, this is angle side angle. Okay, in the next lesson, we're going to do SSS. What do you think that stands for? Well, we'll talk about that in the next lesson. So determine whether the triangles are congruent and explain. Okay, so here we have two triangles over here with some markings right here okay i see a, a 20 and a 15 i see a 20 and a 19 and i see a 45 and a 43 to me i don't think they are congruent because i do know that ac and df uh, uh ac Let's see, this 19 and this 19 are congruent to this 20 and this 20 right here, uh, but the included angles are not congruent right here. So, so I can't say these triangles are congruent. These included angles would have to be congruent. So, you know, your textbook will probably say something like I have here. The, the triangles are not congruent because there is no rigid motion that maps triangle ABC onto DEF. In the next lesson, I'll show you what, you know, we'll slide and rotate and reflect some triangles to show you the rigid motion. So we did that in, oh, I forgot what module that was, module 18 or 19, something like that, the sliding and the rotations and stuff. So, so how about these guys? Are these guys congruent? Okay, so here I see a 46 and a 74. Over here I see a 46 and a 74, and the included angles are congruent. So yeah, those guys are. So they set you up with some questions here. So JL side segment JL corresponds to, okay, let's look at JL. JL is this 46, so that's going to be this one right here. It's going to be this 46 right here. And since I started at J and J is touching the 74, I got to start with the M and M is touching the 74. So instead of saying PM, I'm going to say MP. So JL and MP are corresponding uh, because they, they both equal to each other and they both equal 46 and then uh, so what side corresponds to MN okay so MN is down here it's the 74 well that's this J 
JK right here. Let's make sure we did it in order here. So M starts with the side that's on the 46. So we got to start with the vertex, which is J. It starts on the 46. So we're right. So JK. So JK corresponds to MN because the length of JK, that's what this says, the length of the measure of JK equals the length uh, or the measure of MN, which is 74 inches. And then the included angles are congruent. So then they got it. So which angle corresponds to, and I forgot if I said angle J or angle M first, but angle J and angle M correspond to each other because they both equal that 37 degrees right there. So angle J corresponds to angle M because the measure of angle J equals the measure of angle M, which is 37 degrees. So look at these markings right here. I see a side, I see an angle and a side. Over here I see a side, then the next marking is an angle, then a, then a side. You can start with this side if you want. Side, just go with the, the markings. Side, angle, side right there. Okay, so the two sides in the included angle of JKL are congruent to two sides in the included angle of, okay, so we went from J to K to L. So we went across the 74 to the no marking side over here. So we start at the 37. So start at the 37, which is M, and we go across the 74 to the no markings side. So we're going to say it in this order, M, N, P, triangle M, N, P, okay? So triangle J, K, L is congruent to triangle M, N, P because of the side angle side theorem, okay? So you can just write side angle side or SAS, okay? How about these triangles? Are these triangles congruent right here? Okay, well... We have vertical angles. Can you see these vertical angles right here? So let's get the correct order. Angle A, G, N. Okay, so A, so this is no markings right here. Can you see there's no markings right here? So it's going to start with angle L right here. So A, G, N to the one marking is going to go L, G, E over here uh, because they're vertical angles. Notice how I marked these. Okay, now let's look at the markings right here. It goes from an angle to a side, then an angle. These are two angles and the included side. So this is ASA. This is the last lesson. So these two triangles are congruent by ASA. Okay. All right. So let's just recap real quick. Here's side, angle, side with our markings. you got to mark your figures, you guys. I, I can't emphasize that enough. Students don't mark their figures and you can't see is it side, angle, side or is it angle, side, angle. So over here, I got a marking here, a marking here, a marking here, two angles and the included side that would be angle side angle okay so just make sure you're marking your fingers all right so here we go we're going to write proofs right here okay so given that uh, BD this segment right here is a perpendicular perpendicular means right angle bisector means it cuts it in half right there and we want to prove triangle B DA is congruent to triangle BDC right there, okay? So we'll probably do side angle side on this because that's what this lesson is. So by definition of a perpendicular bisector, because it bisects it, it cuts this segment AC into equal segments. So it's going to make uh, AD congruent to CD right here, okay? Now you can say that the segments are congruent or you can say this says that the measure of AD equals the measure of CD. So these are interchangeable. Don't get too carried away, but this just means segments congruence. This means measures equals right here, okay? So if it doesn't have a segment bar on here, it's an equal sign. If it has a segment bar, it's a congruency sign. Okay, so anyways, we just make sure and mark that figure. Okay, now we got perpendicular. Perpendicular means a right angle and a right angle. So right angles are congruent, so we can mark it with right angles right there. The perpendicular part just means there are congruent right angles. Okay, and then uh, by the reflexive property, this side, if they share a piece, you always use the reflexive property. That's one of the most used properties in geometry. This side equals itself. Now I can see side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So the triangles are congruent then by side, angle, side. Okay. All right, let's try it with this one here. Okay, so we get some bisectors. Okay, so it says 
it says this segment bisects this segment, so that means this piece equals this piece, and it says AE, AE bisects CD, so that means this side equals this side, okay? So, and then we can say the vertical angles are congruent, and then we get side angle side again, okay? So here we go. My defini definition of segment bisector, CD, this segment right here is bisecting this segment right here, AE. So we can say AB and EB are congruent congruent to each other. Notice I'm going in this order. I went first and second, so we got to go first and second. So just make sure you are putting them in corresponding order right there. So it doesn't matter if you said BA or AB first, but if we said BA first, then we got to say BE first because BA is second than first letter, so second and first letter. So just make sure you're doing it in corresponding order, okay? And then the other bisector bisects the other segment. Make sure you're doing it in corresponding orders. There's vertical angles are congruent, and then we can say they're congruent by side angle side. Okay, one more you guys. Okay, so here we go. We got uh, um, uh, some congruencies. So let's mark the figure right here. So it says AB is congruent to AD and these angles are equal. Okay, you got to mark the figure. Can you see a reflexive between the two triangles? They both share side AC. So side AC is equal to side AC because of the reflexive property. Make sure you mark your figure because now we can see side angle side. So the triangles are congruent by side angle side. Okay. All right, you guys, uh, take care. Here's your lesson if you are in my class.